Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. I finally got my hands on the DJI Goggles Integra and I see this as a new version of the Goggles 2, which primarily does remove some features. Well, it, it does also add a couple of new features too, but the point of this is to remove some features, especially around how the optics work, so that it comes in at a price point that's a lot more affordable. So right now I've got the Goggles V2, the Goggles 2, and now the Goggles Integra. And I wanna look primarily at how do these goggles compare with the Goggles 2, especially around fit and also the blurry edges that a lot of people have, including myself, with the Goggles 2. Before we do the unboxing, I actually purchased these goggles off of Amazon myself. I am not a DJI sponsored pilot, so I did purchase this with my own money. If you find this video helpful, I appreciate you using my links in the video description to purchase this for yourself. First thing we have here is the goggles itself. We have also the battery pack that makes this a all-in-one unit, no more wires dangling around. Let's put that aside. We have a box here for accessories. So we have what looks like a top strap. So you do have the ability of using a top strap as well, similar to how the original DJI system was. Yeah, so we've got top strap. We've got some lens holders. So these are for your own prescription. We've got the cable that can connect this up to your goggles and then a cleaning pad. And then in this little box, it should be all the various diopters. So whereas the goggles too has that little dial you can turn, here you actually have to swap out the diopters based on your prescription. Looks like we've got plus two all the way down to minus eight. Okay, we have one more box. No, that's not a box. And then we have the manual. Okay, so doesn't seem to really come with much. Holding this in my hand, it does feel very well balanced. So the goggles themselves, along with the battery pack, feels roughly equal in weight, which should give you a fairly good experience when you're wearing it. At the back, you've got this ratchet, which allows you to loosen and tighten the straps. Now I know Matt's tech, when he opened up this battery pack, he did realize that the mechanism for this ratchet is plastic, which could cause some longevity issues, but only time will tell. Looking at the goggles themselves, we do give up that awful touchpad, and that touchpad's even worse for Canadian flyers because of the cold weather. So every time I wanted to change settings, I'd have to take my gloves off. Now we're over to the typical buttons and joystick, which is what we had with the V1 and the V2, which is perfect, I like that. You also give up that display on the side, which would tell you what channel your friend's flying on. You also have different antennas. So these antennas are a little bit longer than what you get with the goggles too, and they're also not removable. So I gave these a pretty good yank and nothing happened. So I'm pretty sure as others have reported that these are not removable. For me, it's not an issue. I never had any, any challenges with signal quality on the goggles too, but definitely to be mindful of if you are a long range flyer. Here you're looking at my goggles too. I wanna to show you the antenna. So I just pull a little bit and they come off. I probably pulled a thousand times more on the Integra and they would not come off. So I'm pretty comfortable to, to say that they're non-removable. Other than that, um, we do have quite a bit of a different optic system. So the goggles too actually had the ability of adjusting, of course, the IPD which is distance between the two lenses. It also had a little dial that you can turn to adjust the diopters. Now that seemed really cool, but the problem was anytime I put the goggles in my backpack, those dials would move around. So I'd have to readjust them almost every time that I was flying. I actually prefer these. These are very similar to what we used to have in the V1 and V2, except they're a bit more clicky. If you try to hear this, so you see they kind of click into position. So I think that's way better. We also have now the SD card in the middle here versus on the outside. That's that's fine, no, no issues with that. We also have what feels like a different material for the face pad. It's also a bit of a different shape. So you can see it's more curved as opposed to being more flat, which should work better for my kind of face. On the goggles too, the face plate is this silicone or rubbery kind of material. And also you see how the nose area is very thick and it extends past the edge of the goggles themselves. Now let me show you on the Integra. On the Integra, it's more of this 
leather kind of material. And then the nose area is very thin and stops almost flush with the goggles themselves. I also heard some people complaining about the ease of scratching these lenses. So right now I've got the minus two diopter in there. I've cleaned them a couple of times using a soft uh, glasses cloth and I don't see any scratches yet. To test these goggles, I started by doing a 10 minute bench test. And by that, I mean, I wore these back to back with my goggles too. And I navigated through the menu just to get a feel for how the display looks and how it feels on my face. And unfortunately, that was quite a disappointing experience because I found that the goggles Integra were more uncomfortable on the bench versus my goggles too. And I think it's because of this nose area. So you can say that I'm fairly you know, generous in the nose area for, for my face shape. And I think this abrupt stop here causes more pressure on this very point, whereas the goggles too, like I showed, it's got a way more cushiony area here. So that was a little bit unfortunate. I also noticed that the FOV was very, very uh, noticeably smaller. Now, I, our friend Oscar has a page where you can see the difference in the FOV. The V2 is 54 degrees, the goggles too is 51, the Integra is 44. So we're giving up 10 degrees of field of view across the various generations of the DJI goggles. Now for you coming in, you probably get used to it. You won't notice it as much. Me looking at these back to back, it's very noticeable. The goggles too looks like you're in the theaters on the big screen, the IMAX screen, whereas these guys looks like you're watching it on your family room TV. Still looks beautiful, still beautiful OLED colors, but definitely a lot smaller. So I flew these goggles for about 30 minutes, let's say six or seven battery packs. And when I was flying it, way different experience and a way more positive experience. The fact that it's a all-in-one system like this felt great. I never felt uncomfortable having this at the back of my head. It was very kind of transparent to me wearing it like this. I did notice that sometimes trying to navigate these buttons, they were a little bit close to the antenna and I had to feel around a bit, but still way better than that touchpad. I also did notice that the field of view being smaller caught me off guard a couple of times. Now, I did fly right into a tree because I couldn't see the limbs with it being smaller, but I think that's something that you will get used to as you fly these goggles more and more. And this is where I think we have to acknowledge what DJI has done. So really, they've tried to acknowledge the issues with the size of the goggles and that um, blurry edges of the goggles too, by simply making the FOV smaller on these goggles. So yes, that, that does solve the problem. And when I use these goggles, I can get almost the entire screen, let's say 95% of the screen in, in clear view. But all they've done is they've made that FOV smaller. I can do that myself on the goggles V2 along with the goggles 2 through the software. So it's not really the best solution. I'm looking forward to that new faceplate. Hopefully that gives us a better experience. But having said that, the fact that you're getting the latest technology here, 1080p, O3 transmission, all these things at a lower price point without giving up too much in, in my view, I think makes these quite attractive. Ultimately, I think my suggestion still remains true back from the goggles uh, two days. Before you purchase these, see if you can actually get a hold of these to try on, see how well they fit your face, how comfortable they are, how blurry the edges are, those kind of things before you actually purchase or look to purchase it from somewhere that's got a very generous kind of return policy so you can try them out. But I'm quite happy with these. I love the fact that the optics work the way that they do. Only negative right now is the field of view, which I think you will get used to as you fly this more and more. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe and comment and stay tuned for more videos.